Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We're, this is one of our regular update sessions. And um, due to what's going on, we're, we're trying to do it via Zoom. And I think, we, uh, I think we're all set. We seem to have everyone's technology in place. Um, so I'm John Smith and Cindy here with Great Falls Construction. And we've got others uh, on board. Uh, we have Julie uh, and Joey with Great Falls that are um, on one of the screens. And Craig Burgess is our, our um, engineer, civil engineer. He's on with us today, as well as um, a, a bunch of people uh, from, from town, which we'll, we'll do in introductions, I would imagine, as we go. So it, it's actually, today is April 14th. And this is, like I said, one of our regular update meetings. So it's gonna be, um, we've got a little bit of information to share, not a ton, but I think that's the point of our update meetings is, we just, uh, we have, you know, we, we introduce what we have for information at the time and we'll answer questions if any come up and then we will continue to sort of go about what we're doing. So a couple of things that we really wanted to point out today um, in light of what's happened in the world in the last, well, X number of weeks, we thought it was important to, to get the word out that, you know, our, our plan um, is still to move forward with, with the project here. Um, that's, I think, a big, you know, piece of news we want to get out there. Nothing really has changed on our end. Um, we have not been able to be as responsive to the uh, engineers' information that they've been working on, just because we've been dealing with the impact, uh, you know, on the construction company side of things and on the um, working with all of our tenants and all that. So it's taken up some time, but that's not an indication of where we're at with the project. We intend to continue to move forward with the project. Um, we would be foolish not to recognize that there's going to be impact uh, related to the COVID-19 crisis we're dealing with. And I think you know, how that plays out where we've already thought a lot about it and we will continue to be thinking about it as we plan this project. And I think we're, you know, one of the exciting things I suppose is that we've got the opportunity to, and the benefit of having this in our in our field of vision right now you know had we had we had lots of plans well underway um i would i would think that this might be a stick in the spokes to what we're doing but uh, because we have the benefit of having that in our field of vision right now we are are you know that's just one other factor that we're that we're dealing with um and uh excuse me so that's um so with that said, uh, there are a few things I think uh, related to the the COVID nineteen impact that I don't know Cindy was going to mention a couple of things. You want to take that? Um, I think that with the COVID nineteen, it's kind of allowed us to maybe um, to think about business in a smarter way, and it allows us to take the time to to work through um, new businesses and making it making it even new businesses even stronger due to the fact that we know so much now what can happen to a business when a pandemic like this happens and hopefully it never happens again, but it does allow us to be smarter about building a business and starting businesses. And I'm pretty excited for that because I mean, a lot of new businesses will be going into that, um, that area. And I think it's just going to, this is a kind of a positive out of everything is that I really think it's going to allow us to be smarter about that, about the different businesses. Yeah. That's one of the things that we really um, are looking at. Uh, I think in general, you know, the real estate market has changed, has been changing slowly over the years. Um, and I think, you know, some, some sort of really vivid impacts or, or, you know, some things that you see on that are, if you look at Main Street 20, 25, 30 years ago, um, it, you know, I'll use a real estate office as an example. I mean, there was always a prominent uh, you know, business on any main street that had a real estate office in it. And, you know, we still have that in some communities because they've been there and they will remain there forever. But someone that's starting a real estate company right now, um, it's pretty low on the list, you know, grabbing a, a you know, a real estate in that, in that prime area. What you do see in a lot of cases are the types of businesses that you really can't outsource and it's not that easy to work remotely. The whole work remotely has taken on a whole new um, 
just it's just a whole new face of it these days and i think what's socially acceptable what can remotely has changed forever based on the last few weeks uh, but things you know businesses that we've been talking about right from the get-go uh, to go on this on this project still are businesses that are important to be there um, they're businesses that you can't outsource they're services that people need and they're what people want to see in a in a small safe urban center environment and I think that the impact, uh, what, one of the things that this pandemic has taught us very solidly is that we, wanted, we want safe local environments that we, can, um, that we can live and do business in. And so I think, um, you know, now more than ever, that, you know, that safe local sort of urban environment, village center, whatever you call it, that we're trying to create down there is um, is going to be important and it's going to be well received. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're continuing with our, our development plans. Um, the engineering is, is underway. You may have seen people down there, um, you know, looking at, um, working on site, doing surveying, surveying is, is close to complete. They've done some, uh, topo work. They've done drone surveying down there. And so there's been a lot of work going on with that. There's been drafted. Actually, I, I won't get into it too deep because Craig will, will uh, in his update, fill you in on, on some of the specifics of that. But the point is we are moving forward. We're looking at what the current um, situation, um, how that will influence our decisions moving forward. No doubt they'll influence it, but the fact of the matter is we are moving forward and excited to just uh, sort of add that as one more element to how we plan for a successful project down there. So with that said, um, a couple other people are going to speak uh, on an update on the update today. Um, the phone lines are open. If uh, anyone wants to call, has a question, they can call, I believe it's 207-839-2744, our main office number. Uh, that's 207-839-2744. And that is, um, that's happening right now. So feel free to dial in. You'll get Joe, uh, Joey will answer the phone and the questions will come through that way. Uh, we do in this world of trying to communicate virtually, um, we, it is time to get a, um, the Facebook page up and running. And Julie's going to speak a little bit to that um, on, on what she's doing with that. So Julie, are you available to, you ready to jump in on that? Sure, yeah. Hi, everyone. So uh, Joey and I are working hard on getting a Facebook um, up and running for the for the Berwick um, development project. So you should see that in the next couple, um, maybe days or weeks, I'm looking at it right now, but uh, we'll get that up soon and we'll make sure to, to post it out and you guys should see that. Uh, feel free to share it with everyone down there in the community. We figured uh, given the current situation, it's it's more difficult obviously uh, to have in-person conversations. So we, we thought Facebook uh, as a discussion board would be the best alternative. So you should see that soon. And the purpose of the page is just to connect and have conversations uh, that we would otherwise have in, have in person. So feel free um, once that's live to kind of start a dialogue. I know there's been some folks, an example um, of something we might talk about. Uh, we, we've had a call about the Memorial Park uh, on the site, which we do intend to do. So. Uh, for those of you interested in, in the Memorial um, Park or um, uh, on the site, uh, that discussion should be posted on there um, soon once we get things up and running on that Facebook page. But uh, that along with many other conversations. So look for that and we'll look forward to talking to you virtually. Thanks, Julie. So, um, Next is going to be uh, Craig from Surveyo Technics. Craig is our civil engineer, and, and Surveyo Technics is the firm that he's with. And uh, Craig's going to give us an update on some of the things that he's been working on. Craig, are you there? I'm here. Excellent. So, thanks for introducing me. What we've worked on so far is going through all of the data on the site, and there's quite a bit available. And thanks to James for providing us with that data. We've taken that data and we've supplemented it with field work to develop an existing condition survey that will support the design and that is near complete. We've been on this site, I, I believe, three or four days to do this work. We've also made 
site visits to evaluate existing drainage conditions. And we've started the existing drainage model. We've met with many of the local departments to discuss their thoughts on the site and how we can, how we can move forward with the design to uh, all work together through this process. The Public Works Department identified some concerns with drainage and we, we're, we're looking into that. And as we move forward with the concepts, we will take everyone's considerations and work that into the design. And we've worked, we're working with Great Falls on several concepts. And then once we're able to take those concepts and to maybe develop one or two, we're, we're looking to share that with the town. That's about all I have for an update as of now. Thanks, Craig, appreciate it. Um, so I, I know actually, obviously spring we know is coming soon. So we're really getting excited to be getting down this. Um, um, Oh, yeah, I wanted to give a shout out in this too to Kelowna Point Brew and Julie was down in um, on the site uh, well sometime in the last few days and and uh, because of that some cans of Kelowna Point ended up in our refrigerator which was <laughs> really good um, so I'm glad that they're able to continue to to uh, work uh, despite this that's good um, so I think uh, one thing I want to point out uh, you know our next session is scheduled for June 15th at 6 p.m. We don't know if it's going to be live or by Zoom at this point, but it is on the calendar for June 15th, and that's at 6 p.m. And I think have I don't I don't know if are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Because I think that that pretty much wraps up what we had for an update. Unless anyone has any questions. And unless someone calls in, I think the the key. Key questions we all have is timeline, when can we see concepts, things like that. But I think the big message here is these things are moving along um, and we appreciate despite what's happening. So um, as long as things are moving along, we know concepts are coming and um, stay tuned for, for June. That's probably another vir virtual meeting, but hopefully you know, things change, maybe we can meet in person. But. Yeah. Yeah. And I would, I, so that is the message. They are moving along. Uh, we're looking at what the impact is. Um, Cindy's actually, Cindy's been busy working on the names, trying to, trying to sort of get names nailed down. And that's, there's a lot to it. She puts a lot of effort into that. So she's been busy doing that. Um, and I, I would say anyone that has, I, we've said this all along, anyone that has any questions, it doesn't have to come up in a form like this. Um, our phone number is widely publicized. Feel free to call anytime into the office. I have a question. Yes. Um, Steve Eldridge. Um, the infrastructure on the prime site itself, has that been evaluated by Craig? Uh, the water and sewer lines that are existing there. Craig, can you take that, please? Yeah, sure. So I did reach out to the water district. They don't want us to utilize any of the existing infrastructure on the site. So we're gonna to look to make new connections along the roadway somewhere. And then we met with this sanitary sewer department and we've developed several ideas of where the best connection points are around the pump station. And we hope to minimize the number of connections for the sanitary sewer to maybe one or two near the pump station. And the public works department expressed only concerns with the 36 inch culvert crossing at School Street. So we're gonna to look to upgrade that culvert, but the rest of the storm drainage infrastructure around the site seems to be fine. So we have evaluated all the infrastructure around the site. Okay, great, thank you. We have another uh, emailed question um, from Mark Pendergast. Mark, I hope you don't mind that I used your name. Hello, thanks for watching. So his question is, what are your thoughts on the brook that runs underneath the site? Craig, do you want to, uh, yeah, you want to take that one, Craig? Yeah, I can take that. Okay. So we've met with Maine DEP, and I've also reached out to Army Corps on this and the Public Works Department. And the Public Works Department has let us know that that 36 inch culvert is undersized. So they'd like to see a drainage analysis completed to 
to verify uh, maybe upgrading that pipe to something a little bit bigger. And we're going we're gonna to look into that. And also, there's a 48-inch pipe that takes that stream throughout the entire site. And ideally, we'd like to get rid of all the existing infrastructure on the site and replace it with all new piping to best meet the, um, the site needs. And that's, that's about all I have on that right now. Uh, there is a 48 inch pipe that, that routes that stream through the site. So I anticipate that a 48 inch pipe is, is adequate, but the drainage analysis will tell us that. Thanks, Craig. A any other questions? Well, if we don't have any other questions, I guess I'd like to thank uh, Berwick TV. I appreciate um, you guys helping us out with, with getting the message out. And uh, like I said, anyone that has any questions, um, please feel free to call our office phone number. It is, uh, we have people working remotely, so you may end up having to leave a message and somebody will get back to you, but um, those messages will flow through. Uh, and if there's nothing else, uh, did you have anything else in me? Yeah. It's great to see you all, though. All right. <laughs> then thank you, everybody. Yeah. Is that a wrap? Thanks. Yeah, thanks, for, uh, thanks for meeting. Yeah. Every, everyone stay well. Yeah. Hang, 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 on, hang on one minute. Is Mark okay. Pendergast is here and uh, wants to ask John one question. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, John, if you um, is there anything the town can do for you and anything you guys need to you know, let us know? So, okay. You know, if anything you get held up on and need something, just give the town a call. We can help you out. Great. Yeah, I appreciate that, Mark. I think, you know, right now, um, I think the town in general, and I mean the town, you know, the, the people, uh, the employees and everything have been uh, been very helpful moving things along. Obviously, you know, at some point we'll, we'll be bundling this all up into a submission that will then, um, you know, go through the proper channels for uh, approvals and, and all of that. Um, and so this pre-work is, I think it's so beneficial for everyone to have a chance to weigh in. And, you know, we get a chance to sort of boil down our ideas uh, in, in hopes that when we do submit something, it's, it's really widely accepted by, uh, by everyone. But I think the best, uh, you know, we, we really appreciate the effort of all of the people that have been involved in the process mm -hmm. for the last, whatever, 10 or 15 years, all the way up through to, uh, to what's happening right now. I mean, that's really what it's taken to get us where we're at. So can't, I can't tell you how much we appreciate the positive attitude um, and, you know, the willingness to, to pass ideas forward and, um, and keep things moving. So yeah. appreciate that. And Mark, we'll definitely, uh, if there's something that comes up specific, we'll certainly, we'll certainly give a call on that. And uh, we appreciate it. All right, there's one other question that came in over email okay. from Ralph. Um, can you tell us what kind of businesses might be established at Prime? So our, our hope is all different kinds of businesses. I, we do think that, um, you know, when you when you look at a village center, there are certain things that are really beneficial, um, and things like coffee shop, hairdresser, bank, or financial institution, um, things that you know that people like services that people really need and and sort of tend to gather around and help uh, build the community. So, and some of those things, uh, an example, uh, the coffee shop. And the financial institution do require generally drive-through access in order to have uh, enough business to support themselves. So we're looking at the you know those designs. We're trying to weave those into the design right now. Um, and so uh, beyond that, um, there's certainly room for lots of other businesses. And we're in the process. This early phase of planning, um, you know, we're sort of. Um, sort of block planning on the site and seeing what what buildings could go where we're not even quite to the shape of the buildings yet we're sort of um, detailing out at that macro level right now with things that we know uh, you know restaurants are one that I didn't didn't throw in there but honestly basically any business is closed down right now or really 
really uh, important businesses to have in a village center. And so um, we're looking at, you know, we have been uh, collecting a list and Julie's, Julie has a list of the types of businesses. And in some cases, more specifically, people that are interested in doing those businesses there. And um, after we get our concepts figured out, we'll be sort of dropping in the types of businesses that go in there. So I know that wasn't a lot of specifics, but hopefully that answers the question. Um, and I would say that anyone that has an interest in that type of business or being involved uh, in that um, that energy that's going to sort of um, you know begin to develop as we figure out who's doing what down there, that to please definitely call call Julie, uh, have a discussion, get on the list. And uh, if you haven't already, and if you have and just want to touch base again and restate your interest, then feel free to do that as well. Is that, uh, any other questions come in, Julie? There's, no, this none is, more from me. Oh. Okay. Well, I'll do, this is Tom, this is Tom Wright. Is I, I just wanted to say, you know, thank to all you guys for all the work you've done. You know, after the last several years of dealing with uh, uh, an owner that did not want anything to do with us, it seemed like, <laughs> other than to have us clean up his property, it's a real breath of fresh air to have a, a, a company like yourself, a family like yourself that's you know, putting all the effort into this. We really appreciate it. That's right. So is, uh, we really want to thank you for yeah. it. Well, thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Looking forward to continuing to work together. It takes all of us. <laughs> so good. If that's, uh, I think I probably have to cut it off quick here in case something trickles in. So uh, if anything comes in afterwards, then um, we'll find a way to answer it. Um, otherwise, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. And we'll look forward to giving you an update on June 15th if we don't talk before then, which I'm sure we will with some of you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. See ya. Bye. Thanks.